first of all, let's talk about this news that broke overnight. We knew that Sajid Javid, your opposite number, uh, was uh, diagnosed, you know, had tested positive. So, of course, he has to isolate. We all understand that. But, of course, then anybody who's been pinged, who's been in close contact uh, with him, also has to self-isolate. Unless you're on this daily contact testing study, which apparently the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are, and therefore don't have to isolate. Well, first of all, best wishes to Sajid Javid. I hope he gets well soon. Um, I wouldn't wish COVID on anyone. So, uh, you know, we, we, we wish him a uh, mm-hmm. full recovery. I think if you're a parent who's struggled this past 60 months with your children have been sent home because of the isolation bubbles or you're an employer who are struggling because people in your business have had to isolate or you work in public services like the NHS and you've got significant numbers of people isolating... I think there'll be huge frustration at the news that Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak don't have to isolate. It does rather look like one rule for them and another for the rest of us. And Jonathan, and... Just, just to jump in on that, is it your understanding that they have stuck to the rules of this um, scheme or not? Well, the issue is how have they got onto this VIP test and trace scheme? As I, as I understood it, people were supposedly chosen at random. Well, it's pretty lucky, isn't it, that Michael Gove, Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak have all been chosen by random by this particular scheme. So the, the, the big issue here is that when you're in a pandemic, maintaining public confidence is absolutely key. We saw what happened over the whole sort of Dominic Cummings, Barnard Castle. Uh, and actually, uh, again, I apologise for jumping in again. I promise I'm not normally this rude, but I just wanted to, to let you know, Jonathan, that Rishi Sunak has tweeted just now saying, whilst the test and trace pilot is fairly restrictive, allowing only essential government business, I recognise that even the sense that the rules aren't the same for everyone is wrong. To that end, I will be self-isolating as normal and not taking part in the pilot. Well, uh, that, well... That's that, that's not like Rishi Sunak to position himself in such a way to undermine Boris Johnson, is it? Um, and that's right. your interpretation that he's done this to stick two fingers up to uh, Boris well, Johnson. Do you, do you I, think I, this being, is a sign of a uh, uh, trouble uh, at Mill? Uh, well, I mean, I'm being slightly mischievous there, obviously. <laughs> but um, well, if he's done that, then there's now a big question as to whether Boris Johnson is also going to do that. And as yeah. I pointed out this morning on one of um, the other interviews that I've done. And the PM has, I've done it again, haven't I, Jonathan? I'm I'm interrupting (laughs) you every two minutes, but I think you'll want to know and you'll forgive me. Just in, Prime Minister has been contacted by Test and Trace, blah, blah, blah. He was at Chequers. Um, The Chancellor has also been contacted. He will not, the Prime Minister will not be taking part in the testing pilot. He'll continue to conduct meetings with ministers remotely. I think they have seen the way the wind was blowing. Well, it sounds like that Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak have been listening to my complaints and objections this morning. Now, I hope, having listened to me on this, they'll now listen to me on the other matters that I've been calling for, such as maintaining mask wearing tomorrow and supporting people to have decent sick pay if they need to isolate themselves. Um, Just on the mask wearing, I don't know if you were hearing earlier, we've been talking to Chris Hobson uh, today and he's been saying that NHS staff are being abused already, even before the rules were officially changed, about when they tell somebody to put a mask on because on NHS premises you do have to. Um, Presumably you would condemn that. Absolutely. And is and there a, more the government could do to stop that happening? Well, do you think? I, well, I mean, and there was even a report in Pulse magazine, which is a magazine for GPs at the end of last week, uh, reporting that some GPs have, been, GPs have been threatened by with legal action by yeah. patients who um, refuse to wear a mask. I think this is the problem when you get rid of the mandatory mask rule. And, it, and, and look, we're reopening tomorrow, but we have to do it in a balanced way. It cannot be free for all day. I would say maintain mandatory mask wearing, but do other things like allow people to carry on working from home and support buildings to ventilate themselves, uh, pay people decent decent sick pay, and really drive up your vaccination rates amongst younger people and look at vaccinating adolescents. That's what I that that is how I would approach the. So next, just to be tomorrow. clear, are you in favour of all secondary school children being vaccinated? Well, uh, as we un- we anticipate according to the newspapers today that the JCVI is going to recommend only clinically vulnerable children. Mm. If that is the case, I mean, look, in the end, you've always got to follow your clinical advice. But I would go back to them and say, well, why are the United States vaccinating secondary school age children? Why is France, some other countries doing it? Are we absolutely sure? And if that is the clinical advice, will you publish it all? Publish all the advice? Because there are other 
others in the medical science community, others, paediatricians and so on, suggesting that we should go ahead and vaccinate uh, adolescents. We're going to vaccinate secondary school children for flu this year. We, normally, we do primary school children every year. We are now going to do secondary school children this year because we're very worried about flu later in the year. If you're not going to recommend it for adolescents, can you explain to us in detail why not? Because you you want to see numbers go up. I, I mentioned earlier in the programme that um, uptake in the younger category, those are 18 to 29 category, has dipped worryingly. It has. It has. It has. And it is a huge worry. It is a huge worry. And I think we need a big public health campaign to really target vaccination at this younger cohort of people, to remind this younger cohort of people that they can both catch the virus, transmit the virus, and some of them can, be, can develop serious long-term illness as a result of catching the virus, so-called long COVID. So even though, I mean, I remember what I was like in my 20s, you obviously think you're, you're invincible and, and so on, but actually it is in, it's in your interest to get the vaccine and we need a big public health in, campaign around that. So it certainly sounds like you are keener than the government is on, on pushing those scientists to, um, to at least explain why they are not agreeing with Israel, not agreeing with the United States to get secondary school kids vaccinated. Yes, because we know how transmissible this particular Delta variant is. Of course, you know, the Delta variant reached our shores because we didn't protect our borders. But we know how transmissible it is. And we need to be doing everything we can to block off transmission. Uh, I think we reasonably can to block off transmission. And if other countries are, have decided that it's an appropriate intervention to vaccinate adolescents, I think we need to understand why our... Uh, JCVI have taken a different view. And, and John, I just want to take you back um, to uh, the, the pinging and the app and the fact that we've heard you know, repeated ministers now saying we will tweak it eventually, but not until August the 16th. Surely th there's an argument now, as, as Tony Blair, your former leader, is saying that double vaccinated people should not have to isolate if they're pinged and double vaccinated people should be able um, to go on holiday without isolating. There, there, I mean, there is a logic to that, but we're in a period of uncertainty because we know that, and as we've just seen, sadly, with, with Sajid Javid's case, sadly, that even when double vaccinated, you can catch the virus and we know can transmit the virus. So getting, sadly, getting both jobs does not make you bulletproof, sadly. Much, the much pinging... less likely to transmit the virus. Yes, I completely admit that you, yeah. you, you are, yeah. you've got pretty much a 50-50 case of, of catching it from somebody who's got a, a reasonably high viral load, but passing it on, much less so. Less so, but there is some evidence from some of the, I think from Israel a couple of weeks ago, that you could you could pass it on. Now, the problem is with the pinging, while it might, I, 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 a tremendous, tremendous inconvenience for lots of people and is going to impact the functioning of the economy this summer, is actually a symptom of the infection rates growing at the pace that they're growing at. So you need to take measures to try and cut transmission, to push infection rates down and, or to slow the spread of those infections. And then, yes, I think you are right. But that's as, destroying as the economy. I mean, we've seen tube lines um, closed down, uh, supermarkets warning of empty shelves, uh, businesses saying they're going bust, self-employed people not being able to earn any money and people deleting the app because they don't want to be pinged. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So you have to maintain public confidence in, in this app. So I think we should rapidly, I mean, Sage are looking at this. So I think we should rapidly uh, ask Sage to come to a conclusion on whether they think replacing the uh, isolation with daily lateral flow tests will help deal with that will will we'll deal with that issue it's certainly needed in the nhs because we've already got nhs staff who are isolating and the nhs is in a summer crisis frankly you know cancer operations cancelled even liver transplant operations cancelled in birmingham last week intense pressures in the nhs so we do need a resolution to this issue quickly but i would add, but sage are currently looking at this and I'd ask them to come to that to make to carry out their delib deliberations with haste and come to a conclusion swiftly. Jonathan Ashworth, thank you very much.